Hello YouTube, welcome back to my channel. For those of you new here, my name is Ali DeAndrea. Today, I am spilling the beans on how much money I spent on my at-home archery shop. If you have not seen yet, I built an at-home archery shop, and by built, I mean I spent a bunch of money on a bunch of gear that I now have. If you're interested, you can go watch that video. I pretty much unboxed everything and talked through all of the different things that I purchased. In today's video, I'm going to be answering your question of how much money did this all cost because it was not cheap and I didn't really realize how expensive it was until I saw it all down on the paper in front of me. This video is gonna be very short and to the point because there's really not much to it. So uh, let's jump right in. I am quite nomadic. I don't live in a single place throughout the entirety of a year. So with that, I needed equipment that I would be able to take apart and bring with me wherever I go. And I also needed that equipment to be able to stand freely without being bolted to some type of workbench. You can save a lot of money by going the workbench route. Most folks will have a setup in their garage or in their shed, a nice wooden workbench that you can bolt your vise and your bow press to, to keep it stable. But I don't have that luxury because I don't have room for a table everywhere I go. So regardless, I purchased stands with each of these items and you'll see that reflected in this price tag. But let's start with the press. So the press itself cost $400. And I looked on the internet quite a bit before I landed on this particular press. There are presses. There are these like $50 rigs that you can use to compress the limbs on your bow to loosen the string so that you can work on it. But I'm in this for the long haul. I felt that that option wasn't going to have the durability and reliability that I wanted in a press. My goal is to have this set up for a long time. I wanna be a little 70 year old woman still working on my bow with this stuff that I bought. So I would recommend steering clear of those cheap presses and just wait and save up until you can afford something that has some substance to it that won't break and so forth. I think you catch my drift. Now with the press, I bought a stand that cost $160. So if you had a stable bench that you could drill the press to and keep it sort of permanently, then you would save yourself $160. But I bought the stand and I was a little disappointed with it. Honestly, when I was setting it up, there's just extra wiggle room in the legs that doesn't make it perfectly sturdy. So I called the manufacturer and they were basically just like, yeah, you got to crank down on it real hard and it might bend the metal a little bit, but that's okay. But that completely defeats the purpose of me being able to take this apart and make it packable so that I can drive all around the country like I do, which I know most of their clients probably aren't doing, but I was just disappointed that the stand didn't function the way that I thought it was going to. So I shoved a little washer in between the two metal plates, which does help it become a little more stable. And then per manufacturer's instructions, I cranked down on it until it bent the metal a little bit. And now it's fairly stable and I'm happy with that, but it was a little bit of a pain when I was setting it back up because the metal is just slightly dented now. So it doesn't fit in perfectly like it used to. Not the biggest deal in the world. I'm very happy that there at least was an option for me to put my bow press on a stand and live my weird lifestyle 
but uh, you know, $560 price tag for that beauty of a bow press. Next major item was my bow vise. This was the only bow vise that I could find that had its own freestanding system and I paid the price for it. This puppy cost me just over $350 and I think I did save a little bit of money because most of the time I was finding them for around $400. I was able to get it for $350, and there are bow vices that I'm sure work just fine for $50, bucks. but you have to bolt them to a bench, and again, that wasn't an option for me. But regardless, I have to pay the price for my mobility, and I did, and that's okay. I am very happy with the quality of the vice, so really not much else to say there except if you are going to be in one location, you could probably save money in this vice category compared to what I did. Next, the drawboard. Woo. There are videos on how to make your own drawboard at home, but again, most of them are pretty stationary. This drawboard was like the ticket for me because it fits right into my bow press. This puppy cost me $220, but again, I'm paying for that mobility and that convenience, and I thought that this setup was so slick and thoughtful and seamless that my press and my drop board are all in the same unit, and I love that, so 220 on the drop board. The last large piece of gear that I purchased was an arrow saw. And that guy cost me $145. I've seen them go a lot higher than that. I purchased one that was on the very low end because if there was any place for me to save a little bit of money, the arrow saw was it. Now they do recommend that you bolt the arrow saw to like a workbench and that it stays there. That helps the unit stay in place while you're actually cutting the arrows. And all I need you to do is hold down the arrow saw. And last but not least, I spent around $200 on additional small gear. I will be making a video about all of this sort of miscellaneous smaller gear items, but I actually filmed it and thought to myself, this is really dumb. It was just so basic. I was like, here's bow wax. Here's the loop material. And it just felt, I don't know, a little boring to me. But the more I think about it, especially for people who are trying to put together their own archery shops, that kind of information is nice to have all compacted in one video. So I will be filming that video. Warning, it'll probably be really boring, but I'll make it quick and easy um, just so the information's out there because I do think it's helpful. But I spent about $200 on that gear. That number can be fudged a little bit because I had some of the gear that I needed prior to this process and some of that money was spent on things that are a little more specific to fletching my arrows, which is definitely part of a home build, but it's, it's almost in a separate category. So all in, including that $200 for smaller gear items, I spent, drum roll please, just in case you haven't been tallying these numbers while you've been watching. A hundred, no. $1,475. Woo! That could have bought me a new bow. But <laughs> I'm really happy with the quality of gear that I purchased and the ability to be nomadic like I talked about. For most people, an at-home archery shop will cost you around $1,000 and then that number can go up pretty much exponentially depending on how much money you have to spend or want to spend, frankly. So that is 
is it, YouTube. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you found this video entertaining and enjoyable. And uh, <laughs> I had a lot of questions on this kind of stuff. So I figured it'd be fun to just lay it all out and, you know, help you peeps out there who are looking to make your own archery shop. So that is it. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.